My name's Kate. I am a high school math teacher in the middle of my 17th year of teaching in Indiana. I thought that today I would take you guys along for a day in my life. Today is just an ordinary day. It's Wednesday, February 21st, so really nothing exciting, but I just thought I'd take you guys along to show you what a typical day looks like for me. Today I have three classes. I have plan my plan period first, and then I will have two geometry classes back to back. They are taking a test over proofs today, so nothing super exciting. My last class is quantitative reasoning. I'm not sure what they're doing yet. I still had to plan that. That's going to be what I'm working on this morning and what I'm going to do during my plan period today. So I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to get working and I will chat with you guys later. At the start of each class period, I have slides that look like this up on the board so that my students know what they need to do when they come in the classroom. So I have their due now, so they're going to swap their calculator and phone, they're going to complete their warm up and the materials that they need. Still getting some kids used to, you know, we're February and I've had them since August, still getting them used to reading that or doing that. I do have my I can statements, my today, I have a timer over here for when they do the warm up, and then I always have a meme. So this one is very appropriate for right now. We just got back from President's Day, and yes, it does seem like it's gonna be seven years until we get to spring break. So I will leave a link to this slide template in the description below, because I know I've had people in the past ask about this. It comes in several different colors. So I will leave that in the description below if you are interested. We have a high Hispanic population in our school and a lot of our kids really don't speak any English. So definitely instruction is very difficult. Um, for the tests though, I do translate their tests into Spanish, but I had one of our um, ESL teachers talk to me about this and say that it becomes a problem because I'm teaching in English, so the kids are hearing the words in English, and even though the test is in their native language, they don't understand some of the words because they're hearing me say proof, and in Spanish, it's, I don't even know, because I don't speak Spanish. So I just went through the test real quick, and some of the vocabulary words, you know, that we've been using, so given, proved, statements, reasons, and, you know, so I just went through, and I wrote in the English words for some of those things throughout the test, hoping that that will help so that they can read it all in Spanish, but then see those English words as they're taking the test. So I'm hoping that helps them a little bit. Um, so I would love to know if you teach in a area that has a high Hispanic population, what are some things that you have found that really help the kids? I'm finding especially proofs have been so difficult to teach them because there's so much explanation and I just, I don't know. Um, I, I, Normally, I'm very fortunate to have students in the classes that speak both Spanish and English, that are really strong in math, that are just naturally willing to help these students. And unfortunately, that doesn't seem to be the case this year. And I have brought this to administration. And, you know, it's February and I'm still trying to come up with solutions. So I would love to know, um, you know, let's help each other out. What are some things that you found that have really helped? And I would love to try these things in the classroom. I have about 15 minutes left in my prep. I really spent the whole time working on my quantitative reasoning class. We are starting our probability unit. So I got slides. Thankfully, the book that we use has slides. They're not great. It doesn't cover everything. So I was able to use a lot of it. And then I had to add some of my own information 
And now I am just finishing up working through the book problems. I always work through the problems ahead of time. Okay, I try to always work through the book problems ahead of time. That way, if there are any surprises, I know I can talk to the kids about these ahead of time. And when they have questions, I'm not like, uh, I don't know. Um, especially with this, it has been a long time since I've done stuff with probability and statistics. So I'm really making sure I know what I'm doing before I teach this. So kids come in about 15 minutes. So I'm just going to get a few things together and then get ready for my first geometry class, which again is taking a test over proofs today. It's lunchtime. I know I didn't get any clips of my geometry classes. Again, they were just testing, so it was just me reminding them of the rules for testing, handing out the test, and then it was quiet the full period. So on lunch right now, I have a soup that I'm going to eat that and I have a small bag of chips. So that's my lunch today and I'm going to get this done, eat, and then I have my quantitative reasoning class. So I will try to get a few clips of that class today. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at this one. So let's look at the possible outcomes. That's the easier part. So family has two kids. You're either going to have a boy or a girl first. Right? We're going to try to keep this somewhat organized. So one possible outcome is that my first child's a boy and my second child is also what? A boy. A boy, right? So boy, boy. That would be one outcome. I have two boys. Right? That's what the outcomes are, is what are all the possible combinations, right? All of those possibilities. Just like we talked, when you flip a coin twice, you get, you get heads, tails, right? All of those. Okay, what else could we have? A boy and then a girl. Right? So I have a boy and then a girl. And then what? Girl and a boy. Girl and a boy. Is that different than the boy girl? I mean, it depends on the order. Yes, because of the order, right? So all the possible outcomes, we want to think about the order matters. Right? What else could we have then as an outcome? Girl, girl. Are there any other outcomes? No. Okay, so that's what we're talking about outcomes. These are our outcomes. So boy, 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 girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. Okay, so when we think about listing all the possible events, so we could either have, and we care right now, sorry Grace, about boys, right? But we could have how many boys total? Two. Two. We could have Zero boys. Zero boys, we could have one. one, right? So those are our possible events. We could have zero, we could have one, we could have two, or two, one, zero, right? So these here are the outcomes, and these are the possible events. So what's the probability of Mrs. Dean going to the moon? Zero. It is impossible Mrs. Dean's not going to I'm too old for that. <laughs> What is the, you know, probability that Mrs. Dean is going to yell at you guys today? One, certain, definitely going to yell at you guys. Kayla, stop. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Everything. What did what's, you not do? What's the probability? Uh, event. So our formula, the probability of whatever this event A is, is going to be a fraction. The number of ways that it can occur over the total number of outcomes. So that's what we're looking at when we're talking about this theoretical probability. We're looking at exactly one head when you're tossing two coins. So the first thing we gotta figure out, how many different outcomes do we get when we are tossing two coins? Four. So what can we get? Four. So four different outcomes, what are they? I know it doesn't head, head, say. Heads, tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. Heads, head, head, tails, tails, head, and tails, tails. Okay. So we know that the total is gonna be four. And we want exactly one head. So how many different outcomes have that? Two. Two. So we would have the two over four. And then we're going to reduce that. So that reduces to what? No, reduce. One half. I know, I was like, this is... I was like, wait a minute. Not a trick question. My day is over. It is 3.54, so I have about six minutes before I can leave. I'll probably stick around a little bit. So I didn't film the end of the day after our last class. We have what we call impact period, which is similar to a homeroom. So my students stay with me during that class, and then this is a time for remediation. So I am the math remediation room 
on Wednesdays and Fridays so other teachers sign kids up who are not doing well in math to come get remediation, which is fine. I take up to 12 kids. The problem is that I keep my other class that's in here. So I have my quantitative reasoning kids in here and I have remediation kids in here and it got really hectic today. Normally a lot of my quantitative reasoning kids have passes to go elsewhere or they leave because they are all passing and today they didn't. So it was just pure chaos. But anyway, day's over. I'm going to get a little bit of work done. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you are interested in following along and more with my journey of teaching high school math, please subscribe. I do upload videos every Friday, but you can hit that notification bell to be notified the next time a video goes live. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.